I hope you don't mind that I borrowed your car, Miss Walsh. Under the circumstances, Holden, absolutely not. But I would like to understand, Holden, why you took my daughter home with you last night. After Meg called me and told me that my mother collapsed, um, I called up here to see about the car. Miss Lily answered and she insisted on coming. I see. I think you know how grateful I am to all of your family for taking in Lily when I was sick. Yes, ma'am. So you won't misunderstand when I tell you that now that I am well again, I really, I don't like the idea of Lily spending all her free time out at your farm. Why is that, Miss Walsh? Because she's neglecting her studies. And the grades she gets in her junior year have, have some bearing on the kind of college she'll get into. Then what do you want me to do? I want you to discourage her from spending so much time there. Well, that's not going to be very easy. Ah, now, Holden, I have every confidence in you. I think you can manage it if you try. Well, she really likes it out there, and we all like having her. Well, it's not for forever. Nothing is forever just till school is out, right? And let's keep this strictly between ourselves, shall we? Always do. Holden, how's your mom feeling today? She's better. Good. Thank you. I understand that Sister Iva is moving on to New York. No, she's going to be staying. Staying on. Of course. What changed her mind? Search me. One minute she was going and now she's staying. Look, Peter, I'm not asking for specifics, but is there anything I can do to help her through this hearing? Have you tried talking to her? Well, yes, of course, but she's very determined to keep this brave face in front of the children, and sometimes she includes me in that. Well, Kim is a very strong woman. Yes, but everyone has a breaking point, and I'm afraid that she's approaching hers. Okay, that was what you told... Detective Franklin, now I'm going to play you the statement you gave Hal Munson, and I want you to listen just as carefully, all right? Because the discrepancies are on this tape. Oh, Marco, it's so good I'm to sorry. see you. I'm interrupting. I'm, oh, don't honey, let me interrupt. Don't be silly. Interrupt. Interrupt. I could use a break. Mm. Actually, if you don't mind, um, I need to speak to Tom alone. Oh, uh, great. Why don't I make us all some lunch, huh? Uh, not for me. I, it's only going to take a minute. Tom? Uh, sure. Thanks. I'll help you. Uh, what's up? I have this. You got Marsha Talbot's statement? Yeah. I could lose my badge for that, you know. Oh, did, did you read this? Yes. This is... Hobson's banking on this. Look at this. Start here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. She's taking full responsibility for this... for this whole thing, for the whole kidnapping. Mm-hmm. Read these notes, too. Here, got her. But all, 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 of the, all of this is, is, is supported by what Kim and Franny told Roy Franklin. Yeah, but... That she, she was the only one that had the gun, that Doug did not force them to leave. But Doug drove the car and also piloted the plane that took them to Colorado. Well, it doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. All Hobson has to do is convince the grand jury that he didn't kidnap them technically, and what Kim did is not justifiable homicide. Stay tuned for Capital, next on most of these CBS stations. Menswear by Barney's New York. Accessories by R.J. Graziano. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns.